so far we haven't really stored any data in the admin right or in our database for that matter we haven't stored very much all we've done is really our own user that super user when we did the sync db that's really all we've stored so far uh, one thing i am going to change real quick is this color i don't want that to be red anymore so i'm just going to comment it out and that's how you do comments in css asterisks and slashes all right so i'm going to comment it out now what we need to do is actually store some data so if we look in our admin if we go in here uh, and log into our user, our super user account, uh, this is all we can really store is new users and groups. We're kind of kind of ignore groups, but all we can store is users. That's not any use to us. We need to actually have products, right? So in order for us to install products and have them working in a way that's smarter, so it's actually working in the database, it's not, it's not like we have to uh, hard code it each time. Because if you look at think about if you were using just html for those of you who know how to use html you could actually come through here and copy a bunch of html put some pictures and upload them to a server somewhere and link to the server and then you could have multiple views to handle all the different pages and do all this stuff certain elements of that we absolutely do but what we really want is we want to have a storage for all the data of any given product um, that's going to be price, the description, uh, how much maybe our inventory, all that type of stuff. So the first, we're just going to start off something very basic first, and that is storing some data into our, our database. And we do that using models. So models.py in any app, this is where you're going to design the way the tables are in your database. Um, so to give an example of this, um, we are actually just going to try it out. So we'll show it and then we can work from there. So I'll do class. It's a Python class now and we're going to do product. So use the single um, version of product. Don't, don't call it products because of how classes work. Each time we create a new product or a class of this, it creates an instance and each instance will then be a product, right? It's gonna be one single thing. So that's what's nice about classes. Um, if you don't fully understand how classes work, that's okay uh, because you'll see it a little bit more in action anyway. All right, so our class, our product class takes a model, it inherits from models.model. So it inherits from the Django model class. So that means everything in this product class is going to take from this model class so that's like any instance or function basically that's in this model um, we would be able to use it it's a lot of stuff that you don't have to worry about a whole lot right now it's more about getting everything just rolling and then you can start asking those questions well what exactly is in models.model for now you don't have to worry about it all right so we the first thing i would probably do is i'd give it a title so models.char field max length equals to 120 and that's it all right so a few things on this is char field as in character field so that would include um, your normal text your underscores your special characters as well as um, numbers too but it's going to be it's going to be treated as a python string when you actually work with it so if, if there's just numbers in a char field it would not be treated as numbers, it would be treated as a string. Um, and what it defaults to here is null equals to true, or excuse me, null equals to false and blank equals to false. So this is the default preference. Um, there's a lot of other defaults that if you look in the Django documentation, you'll see um, for model fields, you will see all the other defaults that come in for each individual field. Uh, but these are the important ones. So max length is a required one. And that's saying, how long do you want this field to be? What is the maximum length that it can be? 120 characters is what we have here. That's all I've done. For a title, 120 characters is probably pretty long for a title. So more than likely, it'd be a lot less than that. But I just kind of default to 120 for, for a lot of things just because it makes it easier on me. Um, and then also null equals to false. So this means that it can't have an empty value in our database. It can't be blank, it can't be empty. Right. So what that also implies is that it has to be filled out or it has to be filled out in order for 
it to be saved correctly. And then blank equaling to false means that on our when we accept the form or the data at all, that on the on the the user side or so the browser side will not allow it to go through if blank is false. So it means it's a required field actually in your field. So like on a form, when you type out a form, like, you know, like a contact us form, you type it out and it says, oh, your email is required. That's what blank equals to false does. Null equals to false does not do that. It does, it's just the database. So this would run like a different type of error if it was false here, but true here. Uh, that would run a completely different error. So you wouldn't want to do blank equals to true uh, and then null is false. You, you wouldn't want to have that combination. Um, all right, so unless you manually set it otherwise. But for now, we're just going to keep these off and we'll have this title page. All right, so that's our char field. That's the very basics of what you need to do. All right, so then we can do a description field and we'll, or a description and we'll do models and you could do char field again or you could do a text field. Uh, text field is a little bit bigger and you don't have to uh, give a max length at all. Um, so we have product, we have our title, we have our description and then we want a price. So models dot decimal field. I'm gonna leave it empty for now because we wanna see what is actually required here. And let's say I'll do a slug field, models.slug field. And a slug field, we will see what this means um, once we actually get to it. But for now, it's basically just a identifier um, that turns the title into something like product dash one or like uh, product title is this. That would be an example of a slug. Uh, which again, we'll see in more detail later. And then we might want to put a timestamp. So like when we added it, models and it's a date time field. And I'll do auto now add equals to true and then auto now equals to false. So let's talk about what this is. Auto now add means when this is saved or the instance of it is saved then it's automatically going to set this timestamp. And then auto now means that it will update the timestamp or whatever is there. So that if we reverse it and we change this one to update, this one to false, this one to true, that means that every time it's updated, or actually I'll call it updated, every time it's updated then, like if we change the description, this one will change and this one will not. This one is gonna be when it was first added into the database. This is when it was most recently changed. Those are the two differences between those times. Sometimes you won't need both of them, but we're just gonna do it just so you know what it is. Now, if you want a date and time field otherwise, like let's say for instance, you wanted to ask them, oh, when would you like this shipped? Uh, it can get a little bit more complicated, but what you would do is just turn those to being false and you might even want to put these null of true and blank of true, right? So this would be um, requested shipping or something like that. Some requested ship date. I'm going to keep that off, but just wanted to mention it. All right, so we got a title, a description, a price, a slug, timestamps, and then maybe we want to say if it's active or not. So models dot boolean field, and we'll set a default of true. So Boolean field could be true or false. Um, you can also use a null Boolean field, which gives a few other options for a Boolean field. Um, and it, it would be un a null Boolean field would be unknown, active, or true or false. So it's unknown, yes or no, basically. Um, so in this case, we are going to default it to being true. So this will come in handy later. Like active, meaning we want it to be a real product on our marketplace or on our e-commerce site versus um, not on there, right? So if it's inactive, we don't want it to show up. So we put a field for it called active. All right, and now what we have to do is define our Unicode and return, it's gonna take in self and it's gonna return self.title. That's what we'll do, so self.title. Now this is gonna be an instance, so it's an instance method 
that for each time we save the product, it will actually return the title as its Unicode. Um, we are using Python 2.7. So if you're on Python 2.3, as I have not suggested to do, you should be using Python 2.7. But if you're on Python 3, then you want to refer to the documentation about replacing Unicode uh, there. All right, or look up Unicode. Okay, so that's our model. We have now created our model and it's now ready to be added into our database. We can save it and we can run things, but first, before we actually make sure that we add it, we wanna go into settings.py and make sure that it's in installed apps. And it is, it's right here, so products. That is what we want. We wanna make sure it's there. And before it can even add the model, it has to be in there. So now that there is this model, it will, once we run SyncDB, it will install the tables for it. All right, so, ah, I already have errors coming up and it's saying products.product. So in the products app, the model called product, decimal fields require decimal places. This is cool. We need to see something like this. So this is something about Django. It's saying it requires a decimal places. So let's copy that. And we're gonna go into our model and inside of price, our decimal field. So again, it's saying decimal fields require that. So I add decimal places. So I'm gonna say two, right? So one, two, it's like we need that many decimal places. As soon as I save it and go back, it shows, oh, you need max digits now too. All right, so the number of digits I want to actually have for that specific decimal field. Um, so I, I don't know, like 100 at the most, I don't think you'll have more than 100 digits, right? It's not, it's not just a default of 100, but it's 100 digits. Okay, so let's say it's 100 digits and maybe we wanna set a default value, right? Maybe we do, so we could add default and we can put some number here. So since it's a decimal field, we write an actual number so I'm just gonna say 29.99 as my default. Now this means that it's also required because we don't have null or blank in here, right? So that's on each field, null or blank, if it's in there, then it has to be filled out. So I'm just gonna add it actually into the description field. I'll say null equals true, blank equals true. All right, so we'll save this. And now we will run our SyncDB python manage.py sync db now if you're in using a newer version you would use migrate so just stick to whatever version you're working with but in our case we're using sync db and it runs sync and it says creating tables create creating table products and product perfect that's what we want if we run sync db again it doesn't actually show that it's creating this table perfect so we actually have now created our first uh, model, which is going to allow us to actually store and save data. Um, so to actually play around with this, let's actually just add it into the admin real quick. So what we'll do in our admin.py files from dot models import product. So then we'll do admin dot site dot register product. And then we save that and go into our admin. Uh, we need to make sure the server is running. Press up a couple times, you'll get there. And now we see products and notice it says products as products and products. So this is the actual model right there. And it already makes it plural for us, which is exactly what we wanna see. So if you called this model um, products, it would say it would have two S's. All right, so let's click on it and we can add a product and now we see a title. So we could we could say like CFE shirt and price we see $29.99. Now slug, uh, if I hit save, it's gonna say, ah, oh, this field is required. So let's do CFE shirt. And notice that it didn't say that the description field was required. So if I delete the title and try and save it, it'll say this field is required. CFE shirt. All right, and we can give some description, we could save it. Okay, well, cool. So that is adding our first model. And 
one thing I want to stress right now is up until 1.7, Django version 1.7, we can't just change one of these fields yet. We have to do something different to actually be able to change them. Meaning I can't just remove this field and then run SyncDB again and it will work. It's just not that simple. Um, there's a lot of reasons for this, but just keep in mind that it's not that simple. There's something else we have to do, which we will do uh, to actually change these fields. That means to delete them or to even add on to them. So if we want another field in here, like let's say for instance, we want a field that says featured, like so it's a featured product, then we would have to um, add in that field and then we have to use another package to allow us to do that. All right, so that's models. Um, in the next one, we're actually going to show you how to save models in the Python shell. Um, and that way you can really kind of test things in a uh, faster speed than just going through the admin and testing things. All right, so we will see you in the next one.